Hi, I'm Frida from New York, and this is my story. I've always been a lucky, beautiful child, born to parents who adored me. Dad worked as a scientist for a large corporation, and mom was a small fashion designer. Our lives were sailing smoothly until dad's company was robbed by a notorious criminal family, and he was forced to testify against them in court. Because of his brave testimony, the government awarded him a huge sum of money, but at a very dire cost. His testimony landed our lives in danger, and we had to move from one city to another each year. It caused a rift between my parents. I'm leaving with our child if you move to one more city! For God's sake, this is the last city. You're safe here. True to his word, that was the last city we moved to. After eight years of living there, my parents found their footing in the city and grew popularly wealthy with all the money they made from the court case. And I launched a modeling career that propelled me to stardom because of their influence. Freedom! 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 Everyone loved me, but the thing they loved most was my hair. I had the most perfect red hair. It was long, curly, and soft like silk. But one day, that changed. It all happened the night Dad had been working on a serious project in his lab when I walked in. Hey, Dad, can I borrow the limo for tonight? Out of the way, honey. I'm busy. He walked right into me, spilling the entire glass of his experiment on my hair. <gasps> my hair! I screamed and hurried out of the lab to the bathroom for a deep wash. The events of that night passed by in a blur, but when I woke up the next morning, I had the biggest shock of my life. My beautiful red hair was missing! Dad's chemicals had totally fried all the hair from my head, and Mom went ballistic. You ruined her perfect hair! You ruined everything! No one will hire her looking like that! I felt terrible for Dad, but I didn't say anything to help him. After all, he'd ruined my hair. I know my presence in the house isn't helping, so I'll leave to give you two some space. I'll miss you terribly. Dad left that day, and we never heard from him again. After a few days without him, I began to feel guilty about his absence from the house. I attempted to contact him, but each call went to voicemail. When I told mom, she sounded so unconcerned. Frida, I don't want to hear another word about your father. That man destroys everything he touches. After that day, I never mentioned Dad again. All I could do was secretly wish for his return. The week after Dad left, I had a professional shoot planned, and Mom made me put on a customized wig, exactly like my hair. I made this just for you, Frida. Never take it off. I kissed her goodbye and ran out to meet my super hot, wealthy boyfriend, Davies. He was my partner for the shoot. Something for my princess? Oh my god, it's so pretty! He was also a really sweet boyfriend. <laughs> he got me so many expensive gifts, I could barely keep count. The necklace was too heavy for my neck, but I endured the weight I'd do anything for him because he's so perfect. My name compliments your skin so well. During the shoot, everyone couldn't stop admiring how great Davies and I were together. You two look like the perfect power couple. Now stroke Frida's hair gently. Davies did as he was told, but I felt my wig coming off and stopped the shoot immediately with a lie. I think I have a headache. Let me take you home, babe. Davy's chauffeur drove us home, and during the drive, I felt it was time to confront Davies with the truth. I held his hand and looked him in the eyes with all the love I could muster. As I said, Babe, would you still love me if I changed? How? Like, say, I grew a mustache or extra legs or... <laughs> he placed his hand on mine and looked at me with concern. Your hands are shaking, babe. Tell me, what is it? The soothing way he spoke to me gave me all the confidence I needed, and I spilled the truth. I lost my hair. I took off my wig and explained everything to him. But to my shock, Davies instantly switched. He snatched his arm from mine and moved away like I was a monster. What happened to your beauty, Freda? I couldn't believe he reacted this way, since I always believed that true love should always be kind. I think we should break up. I can't be seen with you looking like that. So you never loved me? Oh, come on, Freda. You know we're together because we're perfect for the media. And now what's the point? You're a jerk, Davies, and I never want to see you again. Here's your stupid, heavy, fake necklace. I hurled the necklace at him, and then I angrily stopped the car and found my own way back home. Breaking up with Davies had taken a toll on me. I refused to go anywhere until I got my hair back. Every morning, I'd look in the mirror hoping to see some improvement, but there was none. Mom had to drive me to several top hospitals. Mom, 
The hair follicles are completely damaged. I'm afraid there's nothing we can do. Over time, I had to learn to live without my hair. I became reliant on wigs, wearing them to every fashion event and show. Nobody could tell the difference. One day, after walking the runway for the New York Fashion Week, I received a call from a strange number. I excused myself to pick it up. Hey, babe. It was Davies! Don't even think about it. If you don't want your secret exposed... I'd rather eat rocks than be scared of you, Davies! Really? I wonder what everyone will say once they find out you've been lying to them about your hair. What do you want? Spill it! $500,000. Delivered to me in cash. What do you need $500,000 for? It's none of your business, princess. I'll send the location to you, and I expect to see you in an hour. He hung up the call before I could say anything, and I headed back to the red carpet with a fake smile. When I finished with the paparazzi, I called my manager for the money. I went to the location with it. When I met Davies, I noticed he looked different. Where's the money? Tell me what you need it for. He looked around like we weren't the only ones there. It scared me. Quit joking around and give it to me. He snatched the briefcase from my grasp and hurried away. Not even a thank you. I drove away from the scene, angry at him for blackmailing me. But as time passed, I became so preoccupied with shoots and interviews that I completely forgot about him. Then school resumed, and I was swarmed by a horde of obsessed students on the first day. Oh my god, Frida! I want to be exactly like you! What do you use on your skin? Someone suddenly grabbed my arm, yanking me away from the crowd. It was a girl I'd never seen before. She wore enormous glasses. Pardon me, but I noticed you needed saving. <laughs> I did. You're like an angel sent from heaven. Thank you. I'm Mindy, and I'm new here. What's your name? I'm Frida. Glad to make your acquaintance, Frida. You could just say friend, you know. I wouldn't want to profess intimate conversance with your person so early. I just knew she was a big nerd with all that word salad. I nodded along like I understood her. By the way, would you mind showing me around? Of course! As I showed Mindy around the school, we talked about a lot of things and instantly clicked. She became my best friend. One time, we were on our way to the gym when we bumped into Davies, the last person on earth I wanted to see. Well, well, well. If it isn't the princess and her new crony. Don't speak about my friend like that! Can't you leave me alone? Remember, I know your secret, Baldy. Only because I told you. Don't act like it's a groundbreaking discovery you made yourself, pea brain. Hmm. Speaking about pea brains, I have an assignment for you. If it's money to do whatever shady thing you're up to, I- You and I know you've taken more than that from me. What do you mean, taken? I didn't ask you to spend money on me. This is different. I need you to do my school assignment. Before I knew it, he dropped a hefty sack of books into my arms. And as if that wasn't enough, he audaciously brought his face close to mine as he said, Also, my lips have missed yours. I'm sure yours have as well. I'd rather make out with a piece of wood than you. Why don't we check that out? Before I could react, Mindy's arm came from behind me and punched him in the face, throwing him back. She stood in front of me like my knight in shining armor. You Dow Cop! You have no right to kiss a lady against her will! Davy's face went red with embarrassment. He got up, about to attack her, when some students rushed out of the gym in front of us. Ugh, uh, I'll get you for that! As soon as Davies left, I turned to Mindy and hugged her. Thank you. What does Dal Cop mean, anyway? Oh, it's just a silly old English word for a stupid person. <laughs> you could have just called him an idiot. Sorry, seeing the buffoon mess with you made me really mad. I thought about telling Mindy my secret as well, but I decided to keep it to myself. I wasn't ready to lose another friend, and Mindy was a great friend. I took her to all my fashion events, and we raided my closet together whenever she visited the house. I like this! That's my mom's signature diamond gown. It's the only one in existence. Ooh, sounds expensive. I'll put it back. Well, you can have any other clothes you want. I gave Mindy a makeover, and when we showed up to school that morning, everyone was drooling all over us. The school year came to an end, and I received an email from a famous fashion brand asking me to model for them and inviting me to their show in France. A million dollars every month? This is the request of a lifetime! I invited her on the trip, and together we began to plan for it. But one day, I got the most shocking news from the fashion brand canceling their offer. They claimed I had sent them an email offering my spot to a model named Elaine Holt, 
whom I had never met. Someone was obviously attempting to sabotage me. This has to be Davy's handiwork. He's the only one with access to my emails. I headed home and gave mom the news, leaving out the part of Davy's blackmailing me. And she gave me a brilliant suggestion. You should go to France. If the organizers see you, they'll want you back. I quickly packed up my suitcase and flew to France. The model show was that night, so I styled myself in a pretty red dress and showed up at the event. And you wouldn't believe who I saw. It was Mindy, dressed in mom's signature diamond gown. She was without her glasses and looked so different. And she was with Davies. Anger filled my body as I walked over to them. If it isn't the two little thieves. <laughs> Took you time to finally find us out, huh? Pretending to be your friend was so exhausting. And all that English was hurting my mouth. Also, thank you for the gown. So you're together? Together? No, she is my sister. I... I don't understand. Suddenly, a woman who looked exactly like Davies walked into our conversation. Frida, it's nice to meet you again. We've never met. Uh... We have, child. Years ago, when your silly father gave that testimony against my family in court, stealing everything from us, we went into debt, and Elaine here came up with the brilliant suggestion of Davies dating you. We're going to steal everything from you, just like you did to us. <laughs> Mindy was Elaine? That was when it dawned on me. She was the one who stole my deal. But Davies was losing his grip, so I had to step in. You know, I'm still not over that punch you gave me. Oh, get over it, big head! I blanked into pure rage and attacked Mindy. We both landed on the floor, drawing everyone's attention. In the midst of the fight, Davy stepped in and pulled off my wig, revealing my bald head to everyone. Everyone, Freda is an imposter. That silly girl attacked my child for confronting her about her lies. Throw her out! I was thrown out of the event, and I flew back home in disgrace. When I got home, I was surprised to find Dad. When he saw me, he opened his arms for a hug, and I ran into them with tears in my eyes. Oh, Dad, I've missed you so much. I've missed you more, honey. I was so overcome with emotions that I started spilling everything that happened. Those criminals finally found us. This is all my fault, honey. I'll fix this. Meanwhile, word of my fake hair went viral. Companies were canceling invitations to me. I couldn't go anywhere without being followed by the paparazzi. But one day, Dad came up with a plan. Honey, I need you to find a way to make Davies or Elaine confess on tape to their crimes. That night, I called Davies for a meetup with the pretext that I wanted to apologize for my family. Finally realized your mistakes? Yes, and I'm sorry for everything my family did to yours. Ah, uh, saying the words to him was so difficult, but I needed to put on the facade for just a short while until he confessed. You're not upset about me blackmailing you? And Elaine, posing as your friend to steal your spot in the model show. Bingo! You know what? I'm angry, and you and your sister can eat dirt for all I care! My switch in attitude startled him, and I smiled as I walked away. As soon as I got home, I gave Dad the recorder, and the next day, he came into my room with big news. Davies and his family have just been arrested. I threw myself against him in a hug, and Mom suddenly walked in with a remorse written all over her face. I have something to say. I'm sorry for the way I treated you, darling. I'm sorry for taking your father away from you. Will both of you ever forgive me? Come here, baby. Dad opened his arms wide, and Mom joined in the hug. The news of Davies and Elaine's arrest spread quickly. Suddenly, I began to receive modeling offers again. My fan base grew, and everyone felt bad for how I was blackmailed. Bald models reached out to me, giving me encouraging words. I confidently stopped wearing my wigs and began to appear to more shows in my natural state. I even received several awards, proceeds of which I donated to charity. I dedicate this award to everyone like me who is still trying to come to terms with their real self. There was one thing I learned in all of this, and that was to love myself no matter my flaws. I wasn't made to be perfect. I was made to be me. Hi everyone, I'm Sophia from the USA. Please like and subscribe to SDA. When I was little, I'd always wanted to be like my parents, high-achieving scientists. But as I grew, I realized I could never, because I sucked at everything. Driving lessons, sports, school. Another F, Sophia. So I gave up. My parents were often disappointed, but they always tried to be understanding. You'll do much better if you just put in the effort. I wish it was that easy, but being used to failure just had a way of making me feel insecure about myself and everything. In school, I was even known as the unpopular loser. Hey, loser! 
Disappear. We need this spot. Is your name written on it? That was Heather, the smartest <laughs> girl in my class, and her dumb, super rich boyfriend, Cameron. I'd never understood what she saw in him. He was way below her standards. He gave me a mean stare, and I just left the table for them. Whatever. I was done eating anyways. After school that day, I headed home, and on the way, spotted a new antique store that I'd never seen before, and walked in to look around. I mistakenly bumped into a shelf of figurines, and everything clattered to the floor. I apologized to the owner as I picked them up. I'm so sorry. You look like you might be going through something. Talk to me, child. What's wrong? I don't really talk to strangers. Especially ones who look mysterious and sniffed at people like creeps. I'm no ordinary stranger. I can sense a bad aura around you. So many failures. She was right, but how? How did you know that? You'll find out. I have just the thing for you. The woman disappeared behind her desk and brought out a weird figurine of a man with marks on his face and something like a small horn protruding backwards. What's that? It's a very special, important artifact. It'll take care of all of your failures. Have you ever heard of Eshu, an Orsha of the Yubora tribe in Nigeria? No. What about him? Before the woman could say anything more, someone interrupted, and she became preoccupied with him, so I had to leave. That night, I did a little browsing and found out that Eshu was a powerful god of change, fate, duality, crossroads, a few more things, but there was one constant in every source I checked. He could alter a lot in a person's life, like my grades. Wait, there's more. Eshu can also cause bad change. Well, that's a downer. Was the artifact safe to use? But the good outweighed the bad, and it was super tempting. Well, I'm sure the bad was something I could handle. I had to use this. Please help me score better grades in school and make me so popular and confident. I got a piece of rope from my jewelry bud and tied the artifact around my neck like a pendant before I slept off. I woke up the next day feeling extremely confident and better than ever. The artifact's magic was working. I dressed up for school and couldn't even recognize myself in the mirror. At school, everyone stared at me in shock and it only made me feel more confident. In the classroom later that day, the teacher gave a pop quiz and guess what? Dan, a C. Frankie, a B. Wait for it. And Sophia, an A? I had scored an A! OMG! This artifact was my good luck charm! After class, I headed to the cafeteria and found Heather taunting another student as usual. I was filled with so much confidence as I approached her. Hey, leave her alone! Or what? You can't do anything! I grabbed a plate of pasta and splashed it on her face, and she looked so furious. Ah! You ruined my makeup! After Heather left, I faced the girl she had been attacking. Hey, are you alright? Sorry, I can't hear without my hearing aid. I'm deaf. Thank you for saving me back there. I'm Lottie, by the way. I'm Sophia. Why did you let Heather push you around? Oh, I'm new here, and I only wanted her to show me around. I didn't know she'd be mean. Well, I can show you around if you want. Really? Thanks! As promised, I showed Lottie around, and from there, we became really tight friends and were practically inseparable. The school term finally came to an end, and I made it to the top of my class. Mom and Dad were so happy that they got me tons of gifts. We're so proud of you, baby girl. We got you presents. If only they knew about the artifact. I felt like a fraud deceiving my innocent parents, but I couldn't tell them the truth or the smiles on their faces would disappear. Everything felt like it was going so well for me, and it made Heather mad. Hey, loser! I don't know how you suddenly went from an F to an A, but no one takes my spot. Maybe just study harder instead of being a meanie. Uh, stay out of my spot, or you'll hate crossing me! Heather walked away and I just scoffed. I guess she wasn't used to taking second place. The next week, I was feeling lucky, so I decided to rekindle my love for science once more and take part in my town science fair. I came out as the overall winner with a whopping cash prize of $2,000. And the winner of this year's science fair is Sophia. Congratulations, honey. Don't be reckless with your money. Save it in a bank, all right? At school, I became so popular that I practically overthrew Heather from her throne. And I decided I was going to use some of my money to throw a big party. I had to prove to everyone my loser era was over. Lottie and I spent the whole day discussing plans. I think I'll rent a fancy mansion for the party. That'll cost a lot of money. I can always get another. Why do you sound so sure? I figured I could trust Lottie, so I showed her the artifact. 
This, it's an artifact of the Yoruba god, Eshu, in Nigeria. He can change a person's life and fate. Do your parents know about it? Nope. I can't tell them. And they don't have to know about this party either. Promise me, Lottie? Promise. But at some point, you know they'll find out, right? I'll handle that when the day comes. Anyways, come on! We have to share these flyers around school. Lottie and I got to school and shared the flyers around. And later, when we finished, we were spending some time in the cafeteria when Heather and Cameron approached us. Hey, heard you were having a party. Where are our invites? I thought that was pretty obvious. You're not invited. The words flowed freely from my mouth, and I felt like it was because of the artifact. You'll regret saying that. Come on, Heather. Cameron grabbed Heather's hand, and for a moment, she pulled her arm away like she didn't want to go with him. But he grabbed it, and she just went along. That was weird. Good riddance. They don't own this school. The next day, I dressed up in my party clothes for the party. The pendant on my neck didn't match my outfit, so I took it off and carefully placed it in my handbag. Then, I wore a large coat over my dress to hide it from my parents. Mom, Dad, I'm going over to Lottie's. I'm staying the night, so I'll see you tomorrow. Why are you dressed in a coat? It's a little cold outside. Don't want to fall sick. All right, honey. Be safe. Phew! That was close. As soon as I got out, I took off my coat and headed straight for the party. And it was so fun. That was until the crazy couple, Cameron and Heather, crashed it. Like, literally, crashed into it with a car. I'm calling the cops on you two. You almost hurt everyone. I warned you. To my surprise, Heather ran towards me and started begging. Please, don't call the cops. Cameron didn't mean it. We're sorry. Seeing her apologize for the first time ever gave me such a power trip, and I just couldn't help the next few words that came out of my mouth. Prove you're sorry. Say, you're my queen, Sophia, and I'm such a loser. Here, in front of everyone. To my surprise, Heather said the words. You're my queen, Sophia, and I'm such a loser. Good. Now, leave my party and never come back. Cameron looked furious, but Heather grabbed his arm and pulled him away. Come on, Cameron. After the crazy couple left, I turned around to face an upset Lottie. You didn't have to go that far with Heather. It was mean. She and Cameron deserved it. They crashed my party. But you didn't have to turn into her to make a point. Come on, Lottie. I could never be like Heather. I convinced Lottie I was on my best behavior, and after a while, she cheered up. Fine. Can I keep my phone in your bag? I don't want to lose it. I gave Lottie the bag and just kept dancing. The next morning when I got home, I noticed the artifact was missing from my bag. And after spending hours searching, I realized who must have taken it. Where is it? What are you talking about? My artifact! Don't act like you don't know! Isn't it always around your neck? It was in my bag yesterday, which I gave you. You're the only one I told of its powers. Stop acting dumb! That's not a nice way to talk to a friend. A thief isn't my friend. Took only a little popularity and some cash for you to turn into a meanie too, huh? Lottie furiously banged her locker door in my face and stomped away. And I was so mad at everything. I needed to cool down, so I went into the bathroom. And after a little while, Heather and a strange older lady walked in. I didn't want to be noticed, so I tried to stay as quiet as possible. Mom, Cameron is crazy. I don't want to be with him. Shush! Do you want to ruin the business deal I have with his father? It was just a car crash into some silly party. He almost hurt someone and destroyed people's stuff. Why are you so difficult? All you have to do is date the dumb boy and help him with his scores since he can't even spell his own name. But he's a psycho. I'm tired of pretending to everyone that I like him. You'll pretend for as long as I want you to. Also, you need to come right at the top of your class again. You're starting to look stupid to Cameron's parents. I can't afford that. Do you understand? Heather's mom sounded so mean, and I felt so bad for the way I'd treated Heather in the past. As soon as her mom left, she fell against the toilet sink crying, and I just wanted to come out and comfort her. Until her stupid boyfriend walked in with a long stack of books, which he dumped right in front of her. The nerve! Go away, Cameron! You look ugly when you cry. Anyways, I have some more assignments for you. I need them by tomorrow. Who did he think he was? Seeing him speak that way to Heather made me so furious I stepped out of my hiding spot. Hey, jerk! Why don't you go away like she asked you to? You again! No one's here, so I'll just deal with you once and for all! Cameron tried to attack me, but Heather suddenly stood between us. If you don't go away, I won't write your assignments! The threat seemed to work, because he glared at me before he turned around and walked out of the toilet. Heather turned towards me. You didn't hear or see anything here today. Then she grabbed Cameron's books and followed suit without even glancing at me. Throughout the day, I tried to catch her alone and succeeded when I found her in an empty class. Hey, are you alright? Just because I stood up for you to my jerk of a boyfriend doesn't mean we're friends. 
I had no idea what you were going through, and I'm sorry for making your pain worse. Oh, don't be the goody-goody two-shoes now, queen. All day, I felt so guilty about how I treated <gasps> Heather, that I didn't even notice the cops and my furious parents standing in front of my home. Miss Sophia, you're under arrest for vandalizing the properties of a mansion rented to you for a party. What are you talking about? Cameron was the one who crushed the party, not me! The cop didn't even listen to me as they placed me in handcuffs and took me away. My parents couldn't look at me once. They later came to the station to bail me out that night, and the ride home was really quiet. As soon as we got home, they faced me. Heather told us everything, and we're so disappointed in you. An artifact and a party? Really? You lied to us. We didn't bring you up that way, Sophia. Jeez, they were right. I was a horrible person. I broke down into tears. I'm so sorry. Everyone made me feel like such a loser. I just wanted to prove you all wrong. I didn't mean to hurt anyone. Oh, honey, you're not a loser. We've never thought you were one. We just wanted you to believe in yourself and do better. You don't need an artifact for that. You just need yourself. I love you two so much. Mom and Dad's words comforted me, and after a while, my tears subsided. There's someone you need to see. She really cares about you. Mom and Dad left the room, and Lottie walked in. Overwhelmed by my emotions, I hugged her. Lottie, I didn't mean any of those things I told you. I know. You were kind of right. I did steal your artifact. But it was only because I wanted to help you. I don't understand. I looked up Eshu, and I know he likes to show the two sides to everything. You got everything you wanted, but you also became mean and unlike yourself. You even started lying to your parents. I'm going to fix everything. Lottie's words made a lot of sense to me. So the next day, we decided to return the artifact back to the antique owner. Welcome back, child. You look better than the last time you were here. Thank you. I just wanted to return this. It gave me what I wanted, but I also turned into a bad person. <laughs> oh, child, that was all you. Not this fake replica artifact of Eshu. I sensed an aura of insecurity around you and figured you needed something to boost your confidence. It was all a mind trick. I couldn't believe my ears. Everything I won was all on my own. And the people I heard in the process, too. Wow, Sophia, that means you must be a genius. Everything felt too good to be true, but there was one lingering question on my mind. Who are you? A fortune teller. Thank you for helping me discover myself. After that day, I became better and started to put effort into everything I did. But there was one thing left, Heather. Heather was the student with the highest goal. After class ended that day, she approached me. Did you fail yourself to give me a higher score? What? That's ridiculous. You're bad at lying. Thank you, I guess. And I'm sorry about being mean to you and your friend. I wanted an output for my anger, and I used you two. You didn't deserve it. Just like Cameron doesn't deserve you. You're right. I need to end things with him. I'll be with you as your support. If his parents or your mom try anything, we can sue them with some of my lottery money. Thank you so much, Sophia. Heather later ended things with Cameron, and to everyone's surprise, she became close <laughs> friends with me and Lottie. We were like the Powerpuff Girls. Together, we all graduated at the top of our class, and I grew up to be a scientist just like my parents. Effort really pays off, guys. You just have to try. The easy way out isn't always the best way. Hi, I'm Anastasia, and I was born to the most loving parents ever. Mom was a lawyer, and we'd always play games where she pretended I was her lawyer and she was my client. I find you guilty of drinking my cereal! I sentence you to 100 years in prison! Oh, please have pity on me, Judge! But then, she suddenly left me and dad when I was five, and we never heard from her again. I had to grow up with a dad who was obsessed with computers and electronics. Dad could fix just about anything. Where does this go? Right here, daddy. He taught me everything I knew about electronics. <laughs> In no time, I started to mess with them like they were nothing. In fact, I wanted to be an engineer, just like him. But then one day, while we were busy with a robot project, we suddenly heard a loud machine noise coming from outside. When we ran out to check what it was, we were surprised to find two bulldozers staring at us. Sir, this property belongs to Kent, Inc. We are under instructions to demolish it. What? Tell Mr. Kent that he can kick rocks. Sir, please move out of the way. You have five seconds and we won't ask again. But Dad and I were not about to let these crazy people just tear down our building. So we linked arms together and stood in front of the store courageously. The drivers ignored us and drove their bulldozers towards us without any care for our safety in the world. Dad and I had to jump out of the way. 
After we lost our store, dad fell ill and went into a long coma. I stayed by his bedside every day, holding his hand and hoping for the best. Everything is going to be okay, dad. I promise to get payback on Harry Kent for doing this to you. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but it was going to happen. I swore it. After dad's coma, I had to move in with my mom's wealthy cousin, Aunt Jenna. Dad had no relatives, so she was my only option. What are those? Aunt Jenna was an upper-class woman who was always cold towards me. She hated my passion for electronics and treated my projects like trash. Oh, those are my robot models, Aunt. Dad and I used to- Security! Please dispose of that trash! My models were like my life! I couldn't let that happen! Please don't throw them away, Aunt Jenna! I'll keep them out of your way! I promise! I looked at her face, praying she'd agree. Fine, you can keep your trash, but make sure I never see them. I sighed, relieved. Aunt gave me the worst room in the house, the basement, while she and her daughter, Geraldine, lived like royalty in the biggest rooms. Geraldine was the spitting image of her mother, mean, spoiled, and evil. Once, while she was sunbathing by the pool, I was passing by with a glass of juice and tripped over her foot, which was in the way. She went berserk. You clumsy oaf! You ruined my bikini! I'm so sorry, but your shoes were in the way. That's no excuse, you fool! I'm actually a very smart fool, if you want to know. And then later that day, while I was fixing some robot parts in my room, the she-devil walked in and dumped a bucket of water on my robot! Oops! I thought that was trash! Just like everything else in this basement! I saw Red and immediately pounced on her. Aunt Jenna heard us fighting and showed up. She pushed me away from her daughter. How dare you come into my house and attack my child! I tried to explain, but she wouldn't even listen. It's those useless robots, isn't it? I'll seize them all! No, please! They're the only things I have left of my dad! You should have thought of that before you attacked my daughter! Ah! Uh, I felt like my whole world had fallen apart after what Aunt Jenna did! I wish dad could wake up and rescue me from this house of wickedness! After nearly a month of staying with her, Aunt enrolled me in the same private high school as Geraldine. And I settled in nicely. With time, I became the top student in my class. Anastasia, an A plus again. You should teach your cousin and maybe her D could turn into a B. Geraldine burned with jealousy, but that didn't bother me. She might be the queen in her house, but when it came to the books, I ruled supreme. A few weeks before summer break, my school planned a basketball game. The physics club which I was in charge of were helping out with the electrical system in the gym as the cheerleaders practiced their routine. I looked at Geraldine as she practiced. She looked so perfect, if only she wasn't mean all the time. What are you staring at, weirdo? Your makeup makes you look like Ursula. Her royal meanness stormed up to my ladder and shook it, knocking me to the ground. How dare you, you monster! Before she could charge at me, a nerdy kid wobbled into the gym and tripped over some wires, making the lights go off. I could hear him rummaging around the wires for 20 minutes, yet the lights weren't coming on. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I'm new here. I found my way in the darkness towards him. Hey, let me help. You might shock yourself if you keep messing around with the wires. With my understanding of electronics, I connected a few wires in the dark and the lights returned. When the lights came on, I saw the boy's face clearly. And oh boy, he was handsome. Wow, how did you do that? It's just the fuse. You displaced it when you were going over the wires. That's impressive. My father owns a robotics company. I could recommend you for an internship whenever there's an opening. Wait a minute, his father? Who's your father? I asked out of curiosity. Uh, Harry Kent, by the look on your face, I'm guessing you already know him. Oh, I did more than know him, but Terrence didn't need to know to what extent. Yeah, sure, he's the super popular billionaire, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm Terrence, by the way. What's your name? I'm, um, Anastasia. I hope we see more of each other, Anastasia. Hopefully, I'm not tripping over more <laughs> wires by then. When Terrence left, Geraldine suddenly appeared in front of me. Throwing yourself at the billionaire's son is a new low for you, Anastasia. She sounded jealous. It must be hard knowing he talked to me and not you. She fumed, but I ignored her and returned to my work. 
The next morning, I found Terrence in the library, and a plan suddenly struck in my head. What if I got close to him and used him to exact my revenge on his father? I put my plan in place and did the classic girl trips close to boy move. He caught me. <laughs> Are you alright? Sorry, I didn't see you. Up close, his eyes looked kind, but I didn't let that trick me. Hey, you're the girl from earlier. Please, let me treat you to lunch to show my gratitude. And just like that, he had taken my bait. Sure thing, you owe me one anyways. After school, I met Terrence at a nearby pizza shop, which wasn't where I expected a billionaire's son to eat. I assumed he'd go somewhere flashier, with gold as a meal option or whatever billionaires ate. This is now my favorite pizza place. Really? I didn't believe him. He was putting on the charismatic attitude to fool me. Ha! Huh, too bad I was too smart to fall for it. Suddenly, he lifted his hand towards my face. W what are you doing? Relax. You have a pizza stain on your cheek. <laughs> oh, thanks. You're so sweet. As Terrence cleaned the stain on my cheek, I felt a warm, fuzzy sensation in my tummy. His hand lingered on my cheek before he removed it with a sweet smile. Focus, Anastasia! Thank you. I appreciate the lunch. It's cool. So where did you learn your impressive wiring skill from? My father, Clinton Hale. As I said his name, I looked at Terrence's face for a reaction and was disappointed to find none. After our lunch, I found out he rode a motorcycle. What kind of a billionaire son rode a motorcycle? I began to spend a lot of time with Terrence. My guard was still up around him. No matter what, I never wanted to forget that he was the son of ultra-billionaire Harry Kent. Terrence was very nice, and his sweet gestures made it difficult for me to stick to my plan. On my 16th birthday, when I thought no one remembered, he got me a pretty necklace. Here, let me help you. As he placed the necklace around my neck, his fingers touched me, and I felt goosebumps. After he finished, he stared at my neck for the longest time. You have the prettiest neck. Thank you. One day, Geraldine discovered Terrence hugging me, and envious of our friendship, she ratted me out to her mom. Aunt Jenna was furious. Of course you'd be like your mom, going after guys with money, I see. That was the first time Aunt mentioned my mother. I tried to ask a few more questions about mom out of curiosity, but she shot them down and focused on scolding me instead. Your dad would be so ashamed of you if he was awake, hanging out with the son of the man who ruined his life. You can do better. I want you to stop seeing him. Aunt had a point, but I was very focused on seeing my plan through, even if it meant sneaking around her to see Terrence. My dad deserved justice, and I wanted to bring it to him, no matter the risk. I told Terrence that my aunt wasn't fond of our friendship, and we agreed to begin meeting in secret. On one of the days I was supposed to meet him at our spot in the pizza shop, I found him getting yelled at by his father in a corner instead. I immediately hid behind an opposite wall and peeked out. I've warned you to stop coming to this trashy shop. You have a company to manage, boy. Act like it. Stop making me ashamed of you all the time. Terrence suddenly turned around and noticed me. His eyes looked sad. I quickly stopped peeking and returned to my hiding position. You will show up at tonight's fundraiser like a proper Kent. I don't want to see your silly bike anywhere around the building. Understood? Yes, Dad. As soon as Terrence's dad left, he approached my hiding spot. I... um... I'm sorry. I didn't mean to eavesdrop. It's fine. So what happened back there? <sighs> My dad wants me to take over his company, but I don't want to. Why not? I don't like robotics. I want to be a doctor instead. My mom died of cancer when I was little. I want to help people like her. This wasn't the evil Terrence I had conjured up in my head. I felt bad about using him and was already thinking of an alternative to my plan when he said, I can't go to the fundraiser alone tonight. I need you by my side, Anastasia. Close to Harry Kent's mansion? That was a super tempting offer I could not refuse. I didn't want to keep using Terrence, but I promised myself this would be the last time. That night, when everyone was asleep, I sneaked out of my window and ran up to the road where Terrence was waiting for me beside a limousine. I wore a simple gown, and he wore a sophisticated suit and looked amazingly hot. You look so beautiful. He held the door open like a perfect gentleman, and I blushed as I climbed into the car. Thank you. We arrived at the fundraiser, and seeing all the fancy people in their fancy clothes made me feel inferior. Terrence didn't care. You're the prettiest girl in this room. 
Terrence was called up onto the stage a few minutes after we arrived, and he had to leave my side. I took advantage of the opportunity to snoop around the mansion for dirt on his father. During my search, I came across a door that seemed like Harry Kent's office and went in. I started searching the office for whatever I could find, and bingo! That's when I saw it. A folder tagged, confidential, right inside his drawers. I suddenly heard his footsteps approaching, but it was too late for me to hide, so I stuffed the folder inside my gown. Anastasia? Mom? It was my mom! But our reunion was cut short when we heard the sound of someone else's footsteps. Jump out of the window, quick! There's a ladder under it the plumber forgot this afternoon. I was so angry at her. After she left dad and me, she never once cared to check on us. Why would I listen to you? You left me for years! I'll explain everything later. Please, just listen to me. Go out, no! I decided to listen to her and quickly made my way through the window and ran back to Aunt's house. As soon as I got home, I called Terrence to let him know that I left the party early. Then, I began to go through the contents of the confidential folder. What I found shocked me. My father used to own the company with Harry Kent before Harry accused him of fraud and kicked him out. Dad made me a major shareholder in Kent Inc. during his tenure there. This meant I was worth one billion dollars. But Harry wanted to take it all. I wondered what mom had to do with all this. Early the next morning, I was awakened by a phone call from an unknown number. <sighs> Hello? Anastasia, it's mom. Listen, I don't have much time. Come over to the abandoned trailer park as soon as you can. Mom sounded like she was in a haste, so I dressed up and hurried out to meet her. As soon as I got to the trailer park, Mom's car drove up to me, and I got in. To my surprise, she hugged me. Oh, I've missed you so much, baby. I was so shocked. I'm sorry for everything, but not reaching out to you guys was the only way to keep you safe. How? When your dad lost his job all those years ago, we hatched a plan. I was supposed to get closer to Harry Kent and save our family's legacy in the company. Keep your enemies closer, he always said. Is that why you couldn't spare some time to even check how I was doing? If I did, Harry would know where you were. You're a major shareholder in his company. He wants you out of the way. I had to lie and say I had dumped you somewhere in the Sahara Desert. Everything she told me added up, except for one thing, Aunt. What about Aunt and Geraldine? I pay your auntie thousands of dollars each month to look after you and keep your presence safe, which was working fine until Harry decided to relocate her. Wow, and that selfish woman had the guts to act like she did everything for me for free. I told mom how mean Aunt Geraldine had been to me, and she was angry. That Jezebel, I'll teach her a lesson for messing with my daughter. For now, honey, stay safe. I have a plan, and it's nearly ready. Mom and I kept in touch through secret phone calls. I told her everything about my relationship with Terrence, and she encouraged me to be honest with him. I'm in love with Terrence. If he knows I was using him, he would kill me. He's a nice kid. He wouldn't. And while I was on the phone call, Geraldine suddenly appeared and played a recording of my phone call to mom. Hmm, I wonder what Terrence will do once he finds out you're using him. I tried to snatch the phone from her and accidentally pressed the send button, which sent the recording to Terrence. Uh-oh. Terrence listened to my recording and started to avoid me everywhere. He wouldn't even let me speak to him. I was devastated, but mom encouraged me to focus on the plan. On the day Harry Kent was to meet the board of directors to remove my shareholder status, I showed up to the meeting. No one has seen Hale's daughter for years. Who are you? Anastasia Hale. He looked like he was about to explode. Prove it. Mom suddenly entered the office. She doesn't have to. She's my daughter. And I have proof of everything you've done to her and my husband for years. As soon as his crimes came into light, Harry was dismissed from the company. I retained my shareholder status. The next day, Mom took me out of Aunt Jenna's and I moved in with her. You and your child will no longer receive a penny from me. <laughs> the look on their faces made me so happy. Years later, I completed high school and college. I kept trying to reach out to Terrence, but it was futile. Mom and I paid regular visits to Dad. Hey, Dad, we miss you. So much has happened. Mom rescued me from the bad people, and I can now manage Kent Inc. Can you believe? All of your work is finally getting recognition. While I was talking to Dad, he suddenly moved his hand. Dad! Mom, call the doctor, quick! When Mom came back with the doctor, Dad was already opening his eyes. And when the doctor opened his mouth, it was then that I looked at him. Wow, this is... A miracle. It looks like he's out of the coma. Terrence, you are my dad's doctor? Anastasia, 
Oh, I'm glad to see you. Terrence, I've missed you so much. I'm so sorry for everything. It's fine. I've never stopped loving you, in spite of what's happened. That's why I transferred here, to help your dad. I was overwhelmed with emotions and suddenly kissed him. This was the best day ever. Hi, I'm Amelia. I've always felt like the luckiest girl in the world. <laughs> I had the best parents who were both doctors. In school, I was a top achiever. And I did what I loved best, basketball. I was the star in my team. But apart from all the greatness I had in life, there was one flaw. I was born with a condition called hyponychia, meaning I didn't have nails on all my fingers. As a child, I thought it was cool because my parents said so, but soon noticed that other kids treated me funny because of it. Hey, what happened to your hand? It's always been that way. Super cool, right? All of them ran away like I had a disease. When I figured out that my hand actually freaked other kids out, I refused to leave the house. Why can't you just heal my hand so I can be like other kids? Everyone treats me like an alien. It's not something we can reverse, dear. It's your own perfect flaw. When my parents saw that I wasn't ready to reason with them, they bought me a pack of fancy gloves to wear to school. Your hands are awesome. But if this makes you more comfortable... It does. Thanks. For me, as long as no one saw my hands, my life was perfect. Then, the new neighbors arrived. I was throwing out the trash from the house one day when I saw them moving into the house next to us. I went over to help them and hopefully make new friends. Hi, I'm Amelia. You're a next door neighbor. Hi, I'm Crystal. And that's my mom. Crystal seemed really friendly, unlike her mother, who looked like a hissing snake. Crystal, quit the chit chat and move those things. Let me help. I went to pick up a box from the van, but the woman grabbed my hand. If you know what is good for you, you'll stay away from us. I... I just want to help. Oh, maybe you just want to meet Jackie. Jackie? Is that your child too? Yes. My favorite child. Jackie! Jackie! When I saw Jackie, I died and resurrected. Jackie was nearly a four-feet hound. He looked like he wanted to eat me. I ran home screaming for my mom. Later in the evening, when I told my mom about the woman next door, mom was furious. I could definitely sue her for the threat. Maybe she was just playing. How can you say that? In fact, I'm going to give her a piece of my mind right now. How about we bake a pie instead and give it to her as a welcome present? Maybe she just wasn't in a good mood. Dad supported the idea, and since Mom always listened to him, <laughs> the next morning, Mom and I baked a pie and carried it over to the neighbors. Crystal was the one who opened the door. I'm so sorry for what my mom did to you that day. She's a bit crazy. That's okay. Is she home? The porch suddenly felt icy when Crystal's mom appeared at the doorway. How may I help you? Hi, I'm Amelia's mom. We baked this pie to welcome you and your beautiful daughter. To my relief, the woman's stony expression melted off. Oh, really? This is so sweet. I'm Mrs. Freeze. She took the pie, and we happily turned to go. And that's when I felt something warm and soft hit the back of my head. Ow! Mom and I turned to see that Mrs. Freeze had just thrown the pie at me. Stay away from my property and keep your stupid pie. She slammed the door shut, and I had to hold my back from attacking the woman. You hurt her. I don't want you anywhere near her. I swore to stay away from the new neighbor, but fate had other plans. At school some days later, our school's principal announced that we had a new basketball coach. But when it was time for our new coach to arrive, the lollipop I was sucking on dropped to the floor at the sight of Mrs. Freeze coming into the basketball court. Hello, everyone. Glad to be your new coach. Please treat me well. She didn't even act as if she recognized me. Emily, a girl in my team who was very jealous of my success, was soon tripping over her feet <laughs> to impress her. Welcome, ma'am. At least no one will be more favored now. What do you mean? The former coach treated Amelia here specially. That's not true. Who asked your permission to speak? Off the court now. W what? Or would you prefer to be dropped off the team? Upset, I went to the bleachers, and everyone else started playing. My team won, but I was so furious that I didn't get to play. So I decided to confront <laughs> Mrs. Freeze and set things straight with her. But when I got to her office door, Mrs. Freeze was crying over a baby <laughs> picture. I was so stunned, I turned around and bumped right into Emily. Came to bribe your way onto Mrs. Freeze's good side. Can you drop it? I don't need to bribe any coach. I'm a natural. Well, we have scouts coming in for our next game this weekend. We will see who is awesome then. Glove tag. 
Being picked by the scouts was a big step towards my dream of playing in the WNBA. Even though I was confident of my skills, I practiced more so I could impress them. But something happened that risked everything I had been working hard for. The morning before the game, I went to the bathroom to wash up, but slipped and fell. I sprained my right hand, but what hurt the most was what my parents said next. Well, this means no game for you today. Dad, this is a golden opportunity to be a big sports star. And how are you supposed to do that with one arm? Besides, I doubt that witch you have as a coach would let you play at all. There was no winning the argument with them, so the moment they left for work, I dressed up and hurried to the city's basketball court. I was already late. They were just about to start when I arrived. Is that bandage a stunt to get the scouts pity? She's not faking. I know a broken arm when I see it. I worked hard for this, ma'am. A broken arm won't stop me. I expected Mrs. Freeze to get mad and order me out of the game, but to my shock, she asked for a handshake. You're either very stupid or very brave. Either way, I'm beginning to like your guts. Reminds me of my much younger self. Just as I was about to accept the handshake, I noticed that Mrs. Freeze had hype on a chia too. Hey, your hand, it's just like- What? Never seen a nailless hand before? Actually, I- Take your position, game time. And just like that, she went back to being cold. Despite my one-handedness, I scored more points than any other player. It was a pain, but it was worth it because the scouts signed me up for a national game next year. Emily was green with envy. Later that night, I was struggling with how I could tell my parents about the offer I had gotten. When… Dad burst in angrily and threw some flowers at me. Mrs. Freeze gave me this at the porch to give you for playing so well today. You snuck out to the game? And when did you become all chummy for Mrs. Crazy to give you flowers? I felt the color drain off my face as both parents glared at me. Have you… have you taken off your gloves since you met her? No. Why? Never mind. For your disobedience, we are moving out of this neighborhood tomorrow, and you will change schools. Like, pack our bags and go to a new house kind of leave? Exactly. Honey, that's too sudden. Then next week. Dad's behavior and decision was completely odd, but it was just the beginning. After that day, he began to act super paranoid. He became strict about dropping me off at school and picking me up. And if I had to go anywhere, Dad would tag along as if he felt someone would steal me away. His actions made me super suspicious, so I decided to investigate Mrs. Freeze. One night, I crept out of the house to hers and knocked on Crystal's window. Hey Chris, can I see you for a sec? She came out and we sat on the grass. I just wanted to ask about your mother and send her my thanks for the flowers. She got you flowers? Seems like you're beginning to grow on her. My mom never gets flowers for anyone. So she's always like super cold to people? To you? Hey, don't blame her. She's living up to our family name, Freeze. Being cold should be our family mark. Strangers. Anyway, she says a stranger stole something very important from her, so she doesn't trust anyone. <laughs> we talked some more, and Crystal revealed she was being homeschooled because of a health condition that made her weak. I have to go now. Mom will freak if she sees me out here. Just as she was about to go, she suddenly had a bad cough, and her mom appeared looking angry again. You! What did you do to Crystal? Nothing, ma'am. We were just talking. In the middle of the night? I knew you could be a bad influence. Don't ever come near my daughter again. I watched speechlessly as Mrs. Freeze went inside with Crystal. I couldn't believe she was the same person that gave me flowers. Despite her warning, I planned to go check on Crystal in the morning. But the next morning, I woke up to Dad and Mom packing things into a truck. What are you guys doing? I told you, we're moving this week. I thought you were just kidding. Kidding? We're leaving the country today. My head spun at Dad's words. Dad, you can't do this. I just want a chance to play in the Nationals. Mom, please talk to Dad. Dad says he has serious bad vibes about staying here with Mrs. Crazy next door. Or is your coach. Go in and pack. Essentials only. We need to leave here before she comes back from work. Dad just didn't make sense. So when they turned their backs, I broke out in a run towards school. Amelia, get back here! At this point, I could bet all my money that Mrs. Freeze was Dad's ex, and he didn't want us to find out. Well, I was going to. However, at the moment I stepped into school, I was cornered by Emily and her friends. I can't put it past me that you beat me with one hand. Told ya, I was born and soaked in awesomeness. Or your gloved hand is hiding some kind of magic you're cheating with. Just admit that I'm better than you and get over it. Prove me wrong then. Show us what's beneath the gloves. I knew Emily was going to use force if I didn't cooperate. To make things worse, half of the school was now gathered around us, and I just couldn't let them all see my hand. Just then, I saw someone who could get me out of this mess. Mrs. Freeze, 
Please save me! She ignored me as if she didn't know what was going on. Obviously, she was still mad at me from last night. Emily and her friends jumped on me then and succeeded in pulling off my gloves. O-M-G! E.T. has got a sister! The laughter was deafening. Ew, it's like a toad's hand! Just when I felt I would faint, Mrs. Freeze barged into the circle and grabbed my hand. Amelia, are you okay? She's a freak, ma'am! If she's a freak, so am I! She raised her hands, showing her nailless fingers. Freaky, freaky! Now run, before I put all of you in detention! She helped me to the school garden, where I finally caught my breath. Amelia, I am so sorry- I called you to help me! You ignored me! It's you. You're the only one in the world with those hands. My baby, please forgive me. Your baby? Don't touch me! You heard her! Don't touch her! You have some guts to say that to me after stealing my daughter! Dad? What's she talking about? He's not your dad! And she's not your mom! I am! What? I told you to stay away from this insane- No. She's right. We are not Amelia's parents. Her daughter, Crystal, is our real child. Mom and I went white with shock. My ears were ringing. Fifteen years ago, I went to a park with my month's old baby. A man came with a baby in a stroller, too. We made small talk, and then I needed to use the public restroom. When I returned, he had taken my baby and replaced mine with his own. Dad, that man was you? Honey, tell me she's lying, please. What was I supposed to do? You were in a coma for months after you gave birth. Then I discovered that our baby was very sick. I thought she wouldn't make it past her first birthday, and I didn't want you to go through that. If I knew she would survive, I would have never- This is why you wanted us to leave! Yes. The day she gave me those flowers, I saw her hands and recognized her as your real mother. I'm so sorry. For years, I searched for you, Amelia. Losing you turned me into a bitter and unhappy person. Crystal arrived then, and from the look on her face, she had heard everything. What is all this I'm hearing? You are not my real mom? Crystal, what are you doing here? I saw and heard all the commotion this morning at Amelia's place, and I was so curious I had to follow. I don't believe this. Is that enough proof for you? Mrs. Freeze gave my mom a copy of my birth certificate, and written in it was my condition in details. With this alone, Dad's fate was sealed. That same day, Mrs. Freeze called the cops on Dad. It hurt to see him arrested, but he had to pay for his crimes. No! Amelia is my daughter! She- My heart broke for Mom, and I hugged her. Of course I still am. There's more to being related than blood, right? But today, you have found another daughter. Show her some love. It was the most emotional moment of my life. Dad went straight to jail from there. It hurt to see him arrested, but he had to pay for his crimes. Will you move in with me now? How about we all move in together? Whatever you want, dear. As long as you're there. The four of us rented a bigger house, and even though it was super awkward at first, <laughs> over time, we all drew closer <laughs> together. Somehow, the experience made me stronger. I stopped wearing gloves, and thanks to having Mrs. Freeze as my mom and coach, I became even more unstoppable at basketball. But I still had one more enemy to defeat. So, you got my beauty, my basketball talent, and your spooky nail thing. Thanks to the spooky nail thing that I was able to recognize you the moment you pulled off that glove. Just then, Emily walked in and her face soured like limes. What's going on here? I'm bribing the coach, who happens to be my mom. Your... your mom? Yes, I am. And you know what a mom hates most in the world? A person who picks on her child. I'd run if I were you. <laughs> Emily went red in the face and picked race. She gave me a wide berth from then on. <laughs> I learned that you should embrace whatever imperfection you have. No one can ever hold it against you. And if you do bad things to hurt others, it will come back to bite you in the nose. It's just a matter of time.